Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I am blessed to be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Testament reading for today is from 1 Samuel. All the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, You are old and your sons do not follow in your ways. Appoint for us then a king to govern us like other nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to govern us. Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people and all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. Just as they have done to me from the day I brought them up out of Egypt to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so also they are doing to you. Now then, listen to their voice. Only you shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So Samuel reported all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, These will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots and to be his horsemen, and to run before his chariots. And he will appoint for himself commander of the thousands and commander of the fifties, and some to plow his ground and to reap his harvest, and to make his implements of war and the equipment of his chariots. 
He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his courtiers. He will take one-tenth of your grain and of your vineyards and give it to his officers and his courtiers. He will take your male and female slaves and the best of your cattle and donkeys and put them to his work. He will take one-tenth of your flocks and you shall be his slaves. And in the day you will cry out because of your king, whom you have chosen for yourselves. But the Lord will not answer you that day. But the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. They said, No, but we are determined to have a king over us, so that we also may be like the other nations, and that our king may govern us and go out before us and fight our battles. Samuel said to the people, Come, let us go to Gilgah, and there renew the kingship. So all the people went to Gilgal, and there they made Saul king before the Lord in Gilgal. There they sacrificed offerings of well-being before the Lord, and Saul and all the Israelites rejoiced greatly. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 138. And will read responsibly by whole verse. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I call, you answer me. You increase my strength within me. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He perceives the holy from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. The epistle reading for today is 2 Corinthians. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with the scriptures, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe, and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For the slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. The crowd came together again, so that Jesus and his disciples could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons he cast out demons. And he called them to him, and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed, the house can be plundered. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around, and they said to him, Your mother and your brother and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? Looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Have any of you ever heard of the theologian Walter Brueggemann? He's getting on up in age now, but there was a time when he was the premier theologian of the Hebrew scriptures, and particularly his commentaries on the Psalms are very, very popular. Um, there's a quip of his that I think is uh, very uh, helpful. You remember the serpent in the story of the fall of Adam and Eve in the book of Genesis? He says that serpent, Satan, the devil perhaps, is the world's first theologian. And he makes the point by saying that what the serpent was able to entice uh, Adam and Eve to do was to exchange love for God to musings, you know, sort of theologizing about God. Now that might seem like a subtle, small change. After all, we're Episcopalians and thinking about things is what we do. But I think Dr. Brueggemann's point was that if you forget what is primary and substitute something as primary that's a second or third choice down the line, it's very easy to get onto a slippery slope, right? It's very easy to go there. And so uh, we see that that is exactly what happened with Adam and Eve. C.S. Lewis made a similar point once. He said that uh, why would anybody go to a movie to watch pictures of cheeseburgers on the screen when they can walk across the street and have one. You know, I guess you could see where his point was going with that. But we can slip into the notion of idolatry very quickly when we stop making the primary thing the primary thing. Even the things that God gives us that are his own gifts to us for good. The Torah, the law, was given to the people so that they would be prepared as a righteous people to enter the land. But before very long, rather than using it to prepare everyone for righteousness, they were hitting each other over the head with the Bible, trying to outholy each other and using the rule book to say who was in and who was out. Well, think about the beautiful building in Jerusalem, the temple that Jesus called to be a house of prayer for all people. Before long, it was no longer just a place of prayer, but a center, they didn't call it that then, but a center of Zionism. That old bugaboo that we continue to get ourselves in by mixing nationalism with our faith. It always ends in the same difficult place. So let's see how this plays out in that wonderful lesson from 1 Samuel that we just read. There's a little idolatry that's beginning to go on even there. The people come to Samuel. By the way, 
let's back up. Why is Samuel in the role that he is in the first place? Well, remember he was a little boy raised by Eli in the temple. And one of my um, vestry retreat quizzes to everybody when they join the vestry is, can you tell me the names of the worthless sons of Eli? <laughs> Most people can't. They're Hophni and Phineas. Next time that gets asked on Jeopardy, you'll, you'll know. You'll be ready. <laughs> they were so wicked, they used their office to exploit the people that they were killed in battle. And when Eli found out about it, he was so sad that he fell off the fence, broke his neck, and died. So the whole priesthood died out right there in one day. So Samuel becomes, you know, the sort of spiritual father for the land. And uh, we pick it up that the, the um, elders come to Samuel, now an older man, and they say, your sons are not behaving as you did. Reminds me of the old quip that my father used to say, a doctor's kid can be sick for nothing, and a preacher's kid can be good for nothing. <laughs> Seems like it turns out that way sometimes, doesn't it? I saw a bumper sticker that said, all of our families are dysfunctional, get over it, but... <laughs> So Samuel is asked by the tribal elders to give them a king. Why do they want a king? They want a king because they want to be just like everybody else. And here's that slippery slope to idolatry again. This is the serpent getting them to exchange a good for not quite as good a good as, as the Lord's sovereignty over them. And when we walk down that road, the impoverishment of idolatry, the moment that we choose that path, we give to some other entity or individual control over our own self-worth. And we become manipulatable because we then put our feelings as to whether we're worthy or not into the hands of another person or another institution. That's exactly systemically what's going on with the people of Israel. They don't feel like they can measure up in the eyes of the world, even though God is their sovereign, unless they have a physical king that they can see with their eyes. Samuel makes a pretty good case, does he not, for why you don't want this. And yet they do it anyway, they get Saul, and within about 15 minutes it starts going south, right? David is the next king, Solomon the next king. After Solomon, the kingdom is divided, and it never gets back to where they wanted it to be again, all because they followed the second path rather than the first. We see almost exactly the same dynamic being played out today in the gospel. The family of Jesus, you would think that's not particularly going to be a dysfunctional family, right? The family of Jesus is scared to death because Jesus the radical is saying difficult things and his own siblings and the Virgin Mary are scared to death he's going to ruin the family reputation. So brother, go get him out of there before he says something else nutty. And that's why they're outside the house, right? They too are feeling the insecurity of other people's doesn't Jesus make it abundantly clear over and over and over again that he calls us not into a family of meritocracy, but of a family of absolute equality? How could you listen to his parables and not get that? Who ever heard of an economic system where somebody could work one hour and get paid the same thing as somebody who worked ten hours? Well, that's the way Jesus told the story. Or the king who gives the marriage feast, who doesn't accept the, uh, well, the, the, the good people don't even come to the party. So he goes and invites all the riffraff in. Everyone is made equal in God's sight. A thousand years before the English Reformation, at Salisbury Cathedral, there was a prayer in my imagination. It was tacked to the wall of the sacristy. I don't know that. But it existed. And the tradition is that the priest and the servers, the acolytes, if you will, would read that prayer before they put their vestments on and, and went in to do the Eucharist. And you know that prayer. 
Because it goes like this. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. A bishop friend of mine once called that prayer the great equalizer, because if we come into church with a little bit of an attitude about who might be in there, and suddenly we hear before the Eucharist even gets going, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires and all of my secrets are made known. Well, if I think about that very much, I don't have too much time worrying about what my neighbor is doing, because I've got to get on my knees and confess what I've been up to. For much of my life, that prayer as the great equalizer has been theoretical. I like the idea. Recently, within the last couple of weeks, I've come to experience it on a more palpable and, 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 and in a more real way. My weekly pastoral duties take me into the room of an assisted living facility of a woman now in her triple digits who is completely blind. Now, we add to the normal decline of our mental faculties by aging and add blindness to that. And just imagine how disorienting that is. You don't know what room you're in, who is there. You have nothing to encourage you except your imagination and your memories. And as I go into her room to bring the Eucharist I have to say loudly who I am when, she, when that registers, Oh, Father Dow, hold my hand and say that prayer I like. And there it comes, the 28th prayer book version, of course. <laughs> Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. And in that moment, she is no longer in darkness. She is no longer in isolation, but in a community that she has known and has nurtured her from the day that she was baptized as a baby with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven. And in that moment, separated by a couple of generations, she's my sister. I am her brother. We are family. That is the kingdom into which God calls us. One that gives us self-worth not because of what we do, but because of who we are. A beloved people, loved by God, made righteous, believed and considered righteous by His merit, not by our own. What a glorious kingdom. How glad I am that we're beginning to see its manifestation in this place more and more as we can open again our doors look forward to what God will do in this place. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Lord. <clears throat> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten by me, of one being the Father, through him all things for thee. For us and for our salvation, he gave now and ever. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from Virgin Mary and, and was with men. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Amen. The prayers of the people may be found on the last page of your bulletin of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, when we call, the Lord answers us. Knowing that our prayers are heard by our great God, let us make our appeal. O Lord, we are members of your family. May we you your purpose, purpose for us. We call to you, O Lord. Hear our prayers for the church. Give us discerning eyes to see the work of your Spirit in our lives. Guard our hearts that we might not take for granted our place in your family. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Ruth, our bishop-elect, and Dow, our priest. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of the Epiphany of Somerville, the Reverend Lynn Williams, priest in charge. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of the Province of Myanmar. O Lord, we are members of your family, May the good your purpose for us. We call to you, O Lord, hear our prayers for the world. Though you are high, you care for the lowly. May President Biden and all rulers of the world look to you, O God, for wisdom and guidance. O Lord, we are members of your family. May the good your purpose for us. We call to you, O Lord, Hear our prayers for all creation. Do not abandon the works of your hand. Bless and preserve all that you have made. O Lord, we are members of your family. May the good your purpose for us. We call to you, O Lord. Hear our prayers for those people who create and those institutions that preserve all things for history. From you proceed all good and beautiful things. We thank you that you inspired men and women to create. We thank you that you are known to us in many and diverse ways. Please add your prayers of thanksgiving. For family and friends, and most especially the family of the creation. O oh Lord, we are members of your family. May good your purpose for us. We call to you, O oh Lord. Hear our prayers for those in need. It is you who increases strength in the weak, who keeps safe those in the midst of trouble. By your right hand, offer your saving help. We pray today for Mark Thomas, Fran McKendry, Michelle Barton, Lorraine Bullock, Ray Fleischer, Hank Legree. Please add your own petitions. I ask your prayers for John, who was recently in the heart last night, and for the family. Nancy Brown. Oh Lord, we are members of your family. May the good your purpose for us. We call to you, O oh Lord. Hear our prayers for the dying and the dead. Even as our routine nature is wasting away, you daily renew our spirits. We trust that as you raised Jesus from the dead, so will you raise us with him and bring us into your loving presence forever. Today we pray especially for Jenna Rose Dersher. You may add your own petitions. O oh Lord, we are members of your family. May the good your purpose for us. Holy are you, O oh God, and to you do we ascribe honor to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and unto the Amen. ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you 
in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Glory to you. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace. It's so weird to be able to touch people.
sisters and brothers, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable unto God the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive the sacrifice of our hands to the praise and glory of God's name, to our benefit and that of all God's holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took the bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ is risen, Christ, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people 
the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life of him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven, your worship. Body of Christ.
eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and service of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Oh my. 